Hi everyone, welcome to our final spring session of Wiggles, Jiggles and Giggles. I hope you've enjoyed the past three weeks and now four weeks as much as I have. So today we are going to have stories about dragons. So if you want to get out your scarf, we'll do our scarf song first. Let's put that on and we will get going. Here we go. Let's see. It's a CV in now. But first, we are going to have a dragon story. And I chose dragons, although you'll be watching this a little bit after the fact. On April 23rd, it's St. George's Day in England, just like have St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, St. George in England. And they wear red on St. George's Day. And he was, um, well, he was, they said he got rid of the dragons in England. So, just like St. Patrick's supposed to got rid of the snakes in Ireland. So let's see. The Sunflower Sword. This is one of my favorite dragon stories. That's by Mark Sperry. I'm just watching out my window because I think the Amazon driver is going to come and ring the doorbell. So if the doorbell rings, that's what it is. Okay. Once there was a land filled with fire and smoke and endless fighting where knights fought dragons and dragons fought knights. And that was the way it had always been. In this land, there lived a little knight who wanted to be big like the other knights and fight like the other knights and have a sword like the other knights. But his mother said he couldn't. Why do you want a sword? She asked. To whoosh and swish in the air, smiled the little knight. Hmm, said his mother. And she hurried off to find a sunflower. Well, sighed the little knight. I suppose I could pretend it's a sword. Then he whooshed and swished it just to see how well it could whoosh and swoosh. And it whooshed and swooshed very well. But, said the little knight, it won't be very good for fighting dragons. No, sighed his mother. I don't suppose it will, but keep it anyway. So the little knight trundled up Dragon Hill, a place where only the biggest and bravest knights went. He played happily all day. The sunflower sword swung this way and that and slew not one, 
not two, but three imaginary dragons. Suddenly, the air crackled with heat. Smoke billowed all around, and there stood something full of fire and flame and a fight to be fought. A real dragon. The little knight had no choice. It was too late to run. So he whooshed and swooshed the sunflower sword. It cut through the air like a fine silver blade. But suddenly, as it swung near him, the dragon saw what it was. and reached out to take it. Could it be, thought the dragon, has this little knight climbed to the top of Dragon Hill to offer me a flower? Could it be, thought the little knight, a dragon might not be so fearsome after all. Then the little knight and the dragon looked at each other and both began to smile. So that's how it happened, as simply as that. From then on, they met each day on Dragon Hill and played much better games than fighting. Soon the news spread far and wide of how an enemy could become a friend and how the land might become a peaceful place. One by one, the knights laid down their swords climbed to the top of Dragon Hill and waited while the little knight's mother looked on and smiled. I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did. So if you get out your flannel board, it looks a little different, it's bigger. Looks like the beautiful meadow and it does have dragons written on the side. You have some colorful dragons and of course your dragon flannel board story. And it's called Colorful Dragons. I'm gonna spread out your dragons and when you hear and see that color, you put it on your flannel board, okay? Long ago, in a land far away, colorful dragons like to play. Up in the sky, dragons of blue. Can you find the blue dragon and put them up in the sky? Their wings glittering as they flew. Dragons so purple up above, their hearts simply full of love. Down in the valley, dragons of green, their shimmering scales the prettiest to be seen. Put that one in the valley. Joining the friendly fellows were the dragons with wings of yellow. There's your dragon of yellow. Little pink dragons beneath a tree, happy to be wild and free. Beneath the tree. Finally, the mighty red dragons joined the fray and the colorful dragons frolicked all day. There you go, all your colorful dragons. Very nice. I'm gonna put that to the side. The next story I'm going to share with you is Amy Wu and the Patchwork Dragon. Let's see. During story time, Miss Mary reads Amy's class a book about dragons. Dragons that hoard treasure, dragons that blow fire, dragons that fight knights in gleaming armor. Afterward, she tells everyone to make their own dragons. Make them special, she says. Make them yours. Sam draws a dragon with enormous teeth. He curves the wings from postage stamps. Willa sculpts a dragon with a big fat belly. She strings daisies for the tail. Mm -hmm. 
and you paints a dragon with a long, thin body. It has horns like a stag and claws like an eagle. Are you sure that's a dragon, is Sam? Doesn't look like a dragon, adds Willa. Another new book, the pages are sticking. Hmm, Amy says, maybe they're right. Amy scribbles with her pencil and doodles with her crayons. She glues beads to the paper and some to her hair. Bits of dragons emerge, dragons with shiny green scales, dragons with leathery wings. They look great. They look just like the dragon as Miss Mary's book, but none of them work. None of them feel quite right. These dragons are not the dragons Amy wanted to make. Time to clean up, says Miss Mary. I'm not done, cries Amy. The rest of the curs put their dragons on show and tell table, but there's nothing from Amy. Nothing at all. Willa and Sam come over after school, but Amy can't even smile. Oh dear, says Amy's grandma. Why the sad face? So Amy tells her. Her grandma gets a twinkle in her eye. Come, she says, let me tell you a story. She tells them about dragons that bring down the rain, dragons that are wise and just, dragons that fly without wings. Amy runs to the attic. She remembers where she got the idea for her dragon. She pulls out something red and yellow, something with big fat snout and golden horns. A dragon, gasps Sam and Willa. A dragon, agrees Amy. Amy's grandma puts on the costume's head and Amy puts on the tail. Together, they dance down the attic steps and roar through the house. Maybe you can bring it to school, says Sam. Please, please bring it to school, begs Willa. Hmm, says Amy. She thinks about the dragon in Miss Mary's book. She thinks about the dragons in Grandma's story. Bringing this dragon would be great, but there's something missing. Something to make the dragon Amy's. After Sam and Willa go home, Amy begins to plan. She shows her sketches to her family. Will you help me? She asks. They measure out fabric and cut it into shape. They carve a cardboard frame of it first in the cloth. Amy knots together three silk scarves, and then she adds some beads and some glitter, and a lot more glitter, just because. Ready, says Grandma. Amy takes a deep breath. Ready, she says. Amy comes to school with a big paper bag. The other children gather around. Is it your dragoness, Willa? Show us, cries Sam. Amy puts on the dragon's head. She invites Willa and Sam beneath the dragon's tail. Together they dance through the classroom and roar between the desks. Everybody cheers. Miss Mary laughs so hard she can't even breathe. Amy's dragon is red and yellow. It has a big fat snout and golden horns. It has enormous green wings and a tail of three silk scarves and beads and glitter, lots of glitter. It works splendidly. It feels just right. So in the back of that story, there's directions and there's some patterns to make a dragon. So with your grown-ups help, or you need to ask your grown-up if you know how to use scissors, but ask them before you start cutting, you can either cut out these shapes and make your own dragon, or you can trace them, or you can just make your own dragon. Um, here's the Western dragon. So Western dragons are the Americas and Europe and the Eastern dragon over in Asia. So there's a little bit of difference, but you make your dragon the way you want to make your dragon. Okay, you ready for your rhythm sticks? Let's 
turn that on, get our music all fired up here, and get out your rhythm sticks. So we are going to do our, oh, let's see, I don't want it too loud because that might just scare us to begin with. Here we go. With your hands. Ready? I like sunshine. I like sunshine. I like sunshine. I like sunshine. But then a little rain begins to fall. Oh, softly at first. Getting louder and louder. I'm doing something. Oh, oh, boom. Boom! 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 Let's make some lightning in this sky. Bring your sticks together. And then the wind starts to blow. Hear that? Whoosh! Whoosh! Like the sunflower sword. Whoosh! Whoosh! And it turns icy cold. I see 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 cold. And then the rain turns into snow, which makes no sound at all. Make the snow come down. And the wind comes along and it blows Ready? the snow around. And the snow turns back into rain. Hard at first. And then it's softer and softer until it's just a gentle pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit. Pat, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat. And then the sun comes out. I like sunshine. I like sunshine. I like sunshine. I like sunshine. And when the sun comes out, just as the rain is ending, a beautiful rainbow appears in the sky. Make the sticks. rainbow with your sticks or your hands. And one puff of the wind blow blows the rainbow away. There you go. And that's the weather for today. Very good. And of course, at the end, we'll do our final scarf song. Switch over those CDs. Okay. So... Also in your bag this week, the dra dragon bibliography. So it's some different dragon stories that we have at the library. You can read through this and see if there's anything you like and you can call us up or you can go online and uh, request those book yourself. And dragon kebabs, grapes and strawberries. And if you wanna use a little frosting and chocolate chips, you don't have to. Now, if you're going to make these, Maybe have your grown-up do it because if you use skewers, there's that little sharp point at the top so you, you know, because you need to push it through your grapes and your strawberries. And I don't want you to hurt your fingers, okay? But you enjoy eating those. Your art project this week, beautiful dragon, and then you can blow his streamers so it looks like fire. You have green paint in your package. Now, if you're watching this and you don't have these supplies, it's just a cardboard tube and some paint and tissue papers. You don't even have to use green paint. It's just I like green. My favorite color is green, so I put green in there. You can make your dragon whatever color you want if you have some leftover paints. Of course, there's the pom-poms for his eyes, and then you put your wiggly eyes on top and some little pom-poms for his nostrils. But make sure it's dry before you start blowing through it, otherwise you're going to end up with painted lips. I think that's about it. We have time for one more story. So I think we're going to do Waking Dragon. Waking Dragons by Jane Yolen. And she does the dinosaur books if you uh, are familiar with those. How do dinosaurs say goodnight? How do dinosaurs eat their dinner? Maybe that's not a title. <laughs> Dragons wake up. 
Dragons Rise. Dragons Open Dragon Eyes. Dragons Blink Dragons Bumble. Dragons Leap Dragons Tumble Out of Bed. To brush their teeth, the fangs above, the fangs beneath. Put their jammies in the hamper. Then all dragons skip and scamper. Down the hole on four big feet to the kitchen there to eat. Breakfast waffles topped with syrup, which makes dragons really cheer up. Wipe their faces, runny noses, get into their outdoor clothes. Oh my goodness. Kiss their dragon mom goodbye, leap from cave into the sky. where dragons get to fly. And fly. And fly. Well, we may not be able to fly and we don't have wings, but I hope you can get out and enjoy the sunshine in this warm weather. It's getting warmer. We had a few snowy days there. Mother Nature playing some tricks on us, like our uh, winter, our weather rhythm, right? So that is it for this week, my little friends. I want to remind you there is going to be a virtual tea party. So if you are interested in getting a tea party kit, phone up the library starting Saturday, April 24th, and you can register. So if you want to have a tea party with mom or grandma or it, let us know. And I will package up the tea party kit for you. And then you can join me virtually as I read some tea party and Mother's Day stories. And you can have your tea party at home while listening to some stories. So hopefully you'll join me. And let's see if you have your scarf out. We're going to put our final scarf song on. And if uh, we'll end with that. And then I'll see you in the summer for some other stories and some more fun. Otherwise, you can stop in the library and see me as well. Okay, here we go. Scarves up and down and around. The scarves are softly flowing left, right, left. The scarves are softly flowing left, right, left.
Take care. Remember to listen to your grown-ups because they love you. Take care. Bye-bye.